Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to execute a full court zone press. The 1-2-1-1 or diamond zone press, so stay tuned. It's holding him! That's a jump ball! You missed that ball! First, he got whacked! Call a foul! Get up! How is that not a foul? So what is a press? A press is when you or your opponent applies full court defensive pressure designed to make it difficult for players to advance the ball from their backcourt into their frontcourt. A press is typically applied after a made basket or an inbound along the baseline in the backcourt. The goal of any press is to force turnovers through errant passes, steals, and design traps. Presses can be both player to player or zone coverage. In this video, we're going to go over how to run the 1-2-1-1 or diamond zone press. The 1-2-1-1 or diamond zone press is typically the first zone press a player or coach learns. It's easy to teach the fundamentals of this press to young players. Like any full court pressure, the 1-2-1-1 press disrupts the flow of offense. Even if your opponent breaks your press, the flow of their offense is significantly altered and you've taken time off their shot clock. Getting a few turnovers and steals from this press can really build your team's confidence and shift the momentum in any game in your favor. What are the weaknesses of the 1-2-1-1 press? You'll need good trapping skills. Good trapping skills means knowing when to and when not to trap, and especially not to foul. This is sometimes harder to teach younger players. Your team also needs to have good judgment in deciding when to go for a steal and when not to. Teach your team that if they go for a steal, they absolutely must get a hand on the ball and deflect the pass, otherwise don't gamble on that pass. Lastly, because the 1-2-1-1 is easy to teach, it's also the zone press that most teams and coaches prepare against. Know when to change up or call off your press. So what is a zone press? A zone press is where the defenders are positioned in a particular zone formation instead of matchup or player to player, where defenders are matched up against each offensive player. Let's take a look at the 1-2-1-1 or diamond zone press setup. So after we score a basket and our opponent has to inbound the ball along the baseline in their backcourt, this is how we set up our 1-2-1-1 or diamond zone press. In a zone press, players have specific roles and zone coverages. Let's go over them now. The front defender in the press has two main responsibilities. Once the ball is inbounded, their job is to stay in front and encourage the sideline. Don't let your opponent bring the ball up the middle. Stopping your opponents from advancing the ball up the middle gives you the advantage of the sidelines. Once the ball is inbounded, our three player is responsible for staying in front of the ball and encouraging the sideline. Even if the ball is inbounded and the offense dribbles down the opposite side of the court, it's still our number three player's responsibility to stay in front and encourage the sideline. I've numbered this position three, but whoever you choose to play this spot should be able to stay in front of their opponent and force them to pick up the dribble and make a pass difficult without fouling. This is your front defender's area of responsibility. Now let's look at the next level in our press and the responsibility of our two defenders here. Once the ball is inbounded and our front defender forces the ball down a sideline, it's our second level defender's responsibility to take the correct angle and cut off the sideline. If our second line of defense doesn't cut off the sideline and allows our opponent to get around here, our press is broken. Teach your players to take a good angle of attack and to step on the sideline if necessary. If we are successful in trapping along the sideline here, the only pass we will allow without pressure is the pass back to the inbounder. We will always allow this pass. When the ball is forced to the sideline and we trap, 
the offense will likely try to get the ball to the middle of the court to break the press. It's our opposite side defender's responsibility to deny or steal this pass. Here's a look with the ball advancing along the other sideline. When our player 2 comes to trap, the opposite defender looks to take away any pass to the middle. So our second line defenders in this press are responsible for cutting off the sidelines and trapping in this area of the court. Player 1 is responsible for trapping and cutting off the middle pass on one side of the court and player 2 is responsible for the other half. Teach your players good trapping techniques, controlled closeouts, high hands, and no reaching or fouling. Any pass out of the trap should be difficult. With both trappers hands up high and active, the only pass out of the trap is usually a high lobbing pass and those are easier to pick off or deflect. Now let's go over player 4's press responsibilities. After player 3 encourages the sideline, player 1 cuts off the sideline and traps and player 2 takes away this middle pass. The most common strategy from your opponent will be to try and pass out of the trap to a teammate here. This looks like the easiest pass to make. Player 4 is responsible for taking away this sideline pass while watching out for the pass to the middle as well. Player 4 needs to learn to split the distance between the middle and the sideline opponents. Even though player 2 has the middle pass covered, cheating too much to the sideline can leave your middle exposed to a good lead pass. The best way for player 4 to play this position in the press is to watch their opponent's eyes and try to make the sideline pass look open when it's really not. So player 4's area of responsibility is both sides of the court in this area. This position in the press will get the most deflections and steals. I have a firm rule that if you go for the steal, you must put a hand on the ball. Teach your players to only go for the steal or deflection when they are absolutely sure they can at least put a hand on the ball. A complete miss on a pass can lead to easy points for your opponents. Now let's go over player 5's press responsibilities. Player 5 is our safety and has two main responsibilities. The first is to stay as deep as the farthest opponent back. The second responsibility is not to give up any layups. Even if the farthest player back is at half court, our safety can come up that high in this press so long as no one gets behind them. So let's review. Our front defender stays in front and encourages the sideline and we will always allow this pass back to the inbounder. They are responsible for encouraging the sideline on both sides of the court. Most steals and deflections are going to come from our four player with passes out of the trap to the middle or the sideline. Steals and deflections can also come from our second defender here. Our second line defenders need to take a good angle to trap along the sideline. If our opponent dribbles around us, our press is broken. And lastly, our safety must stay as deep as the last defender and not give up any layups. These are the press goals I identify to my players. The first goal is to create pressure and make it difficult to dribble or pass the ball. You'll find that most times, pressure alone is enough to accomplish our second goal, which is to force turnovers. Turnovers can happen in many ways. Here are the turnovers I make sure my teams are aware of. 10 second backcourt violation, 5 second closely guarded violation, 5 second held ball violation, double or illegal dribble violation, out-of-bounds violation, traveling violation, bad pass out-of-bounds, or forcing our opponent to call a timeout. Well, this isn't a turnover. I still consider this a positive as we forced our opponents to burn a timeout. Making your team aware that creating pressure in the press can force any one of these turnovers helps to keep them focused on applying pressure and not necessarily on getting steals. The third goal I identify to my players is no reaching or fouling. Unless we're trying to stop the clock from running, we don't want to put our opponents into the bonus situation or get into foul trouble. 
And lastly, I let my players know that steals are great, but they're a bonus from our press. Stay focused on creating pressure and causing havoc. Thanks for watching my video on how to run the 1211 or Diamond Zone Press. If you like this, leave a like. If you like the content, please subscribe. In this video, we covered how to run the 1211 Diamond Zone Press, position responsibilities, and some goals to give your players. This is the first zone press any young team is likely to encounter. If you'd like to know my strategy on breaking any zone press, check out my video number 23. When should you apply or call off a press? Well, that really depends on the game situation and your own coaching style. Some coaches will only call a press to try and dig their way out of a point deficit. My preference is to apply more pressure on an opponent and expand a lead if possible. The easiest victories come when your opponent's will to compete is broken. In contrast, the toughest opponents are those who never quit. If you're looking to try this zone press, I wish you much success. Leave me a comment and let me know how it worked out for you and your team. If you have recorded a video of your team running this play or any of the plays you've learned from my channel and would like me to create a video reviewing the execution of the play, please email me at coachrustvideos at gmail.com. Blessings to you and have a great season.